it's that time of the month where I tell you guys all about what I read last month and my thoughts. So welcome to my June wrap up. June honestly was a lot of romances. I feel like I was really in the mood for like very easy to pick up, very fast to get through romances and now I am like in my fantasy era but that's like for July. So yeah this is kind of like just a month where I was breezing through a lot of romances. I read 11 books total so let's talk about them. Starting off with the first book I finished in June is Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. This is a book that's been everywhere. It won um, one of the New York Times Notable Books of the Year. It was the Barnes & Noble Book of the Year. Like this book is everywhere so I really decided to just pick it up because it's about a woman in STEM and I am a woman in STEM and I felt like it was going to be very relatable for me and spoiler alert it was. So this is the story of Elizabeth Zott. She is trying her hardest to be a chemist in the 60s in a time where science was not very welcoming to women at all and she becomes a single mother and one day she's basically granted this opportunity to host a cooking show and in this cooking show she uses chemistry to explain cooking but in the show she's really kind of prompting women to start thinking for themselves and start to be thinking more independently and it's kind of causing some social stirs some social controversies um and she is you know kind of seen as like a little bit of a troublemaker and a trailblazer for her time and this is her story so i did end up giving this book five stars just because a lot of the problems that elizabeth zott faces like she has male counterparts that take credit for her work she really was not as highly regarded in her field as she should have been just because she was one of the only women she faced rampant sexism and it was just really hard to read about as a woman i have probably experienced similar things but to a lesser degree than her and it just really made me emotional to think about like how far women in step have come since even just the 60s which when you think about it is not that long ago i thought that this was told in a very um it was like a very punctual sharp witty kind of prose so it's kind of just like gets right to the point but I think that matches really well with Elizabeth's personality because she was kind of a very no-nonsense woman and you know you kind of see her fall in love and then have to be a single mother raising a child and not that wasn't really like ever a goal or a plan of hers and seeing how all the threads of the story come together was also really interesting as well there was like a tiny bit of a mystery in here but i also just really enjoyed the scenes of her like on the cooking show and the way that she would explain cooking to the housewives and the way that her messages were getting to the housewives and how how it really kind of you know made them question their societal norms that they were living in so overall I can really see like why this book has been doing so well and it's something that just really really resonated with me and my experience in my life so I will definitely treasure this book and my experience reading it forever. Next up I read The Jassad Air by Sarah Hashim. This is a debut fantasy novel and I think I already gave my copy away to someone else to read but yeah so I had a physical art from the publisher. So this is the story of Sylvia and she is the heir to Deshad, which is now the Scorched Kingdom because basically her kingdom was destroyed because of their use of magic. And they were one of the last countries to like still have magic in a land where all the magic is dying. So now we follow Sylvia 10 years later and she's hiding out in some backwater little town when all of a sudden the Nizal heir and Nizal is a country that kind of like keeps peace between all of the other countries comes and finds her and selects her to be the champion in a tournament between all of the nations like she's going to represent their nation because he sees that she has magic and no one like is allowed to have magic anymore and he kind of wants to use her to bring out the rebels but little does he know that she's actually the Jasad heir not just like a random Jasadi with magic so i thought that this book was very interesting i ended up giving it four stars Sylvia is a very interesting character because she's the chosen one but she's really really reluctant to be so and it's very much like an exploration of the expectations that are placed upon us that we might not actually want or like our identity as it is tied to our culture and where we come from and so it was a very intriguing character study in the way that she develops where she like really just like wants to survive and like doesn't 
really care about the fact that she's the heir to this nation that was destroyed. I also thought that the magic system was really intriguing and the story of her magic. She basically has these like cuffs on that absorb her magic so she can't really access her powers. I thought that that was really intriguing and well done as well. There was some good enemies to lovers tension like Eren who is the Nizal heir and her like really are just kind of using each other in the meantime and it's kind of interesting to see like the relationship progress between the two of them. I did think that it was kind of a sudden jump between enemies to lovers but they definitely do start out as true enemies and overall I did find this book enjoyable. I thought that maybe the trials at the end were a little bit too fast and the beginning of like how they got there were a little bit too slow so I did have some issues with the pacing. But yeah overall I would say 3.5 slash 4 stars and a really solid debut. Next I read Reckless by Elsie Silver which is the fourth book in the Chestnut Spring series. We follow Winter. She is the half-sister of Summer from the first book and Theo who is a fellow bull rider to Rhett from the first book and basically they meet at a big family dinner and they have a one-night stand and then she's pregnant and I I don't know how many further details I should give but it's basically a secret baby trope and oh my god this book pulled at my heartstrings. Winter also is someone that has gone like through a divorce and she like was really in kind of a loveless marriage and she like just really wants to be a mother but she's also like a doctor and has these like very high expectations on her at, from her job and so she doesn't really know how she's like going to be a single mother but she definitely kind of pull it off and Theo just comes in and it's just like it's the cutest interactions. I don't know what it is about throwing a baby in the mix but like it clearly just like upped the chemistry between the characters and I just thought all like the family interactions were adorable. There were some like touch her and die moments too that I loved. I just I feel like Elsie Silver just writes such good cowboy romances. I just live for them and they're so so much fun so I gave it five stars because I just adored this book. Next is Unfortunately Yours by Tessa Bailey which is the second book in her A Vine Mess series. The first book Secretly Yours was one of my favorite romances of the year and this book is about Natalie Vos. She is the heiress to this gigantic wine making family in Napa and basically in order to access her trust fund she needs to be married and then we have August who she like can't stand and August is a former Navy SEAL and he's come to open a winery in his dead friend's memory but he has no idea what he's doing. So they kind of form this marriage of convenience so that Natalie can get her money and August can actually like learn how to make proper wine and you know they're married so they're in close proximity to each other and this book really uh, deals with grief and like how to honor someone's memory like in the way that August is trying to honor his friend Sam's memory by running this winery and then also Natalie deals with a lot of feelings of feeling like she's not good enough or that she's excluded from things and so it's really her just trying to find her place in the world and these two characters come together and I gave this book four stars. It was again fun, lots of really fun banter between the two of them because they kind of hate each other but they're also married. I love Tessa Bailey and this book was no exception. Like these books are always just so fun, have fun settings, always have great spice and great romantic and sexual tension and this book was all of those things. Next is Craving in His Blood by Zoe Draven and I was so looking forward to this book because Desire in His Blood by Zoe Draven was one of my favorite books that I read earlier this year. It's called the Brides of Kylor series and it follows these um, Kylor who are vampire aliens essentially living on their planet but there's all intergalactic travel and whatnot. And in the second book we have Millie and she is the human daughter of this like world renowned, not even world renowned, universe renowned chef. So she's traveled all around the galaxy like with her father and then basically after her father dies she has found herself on the planet of Kylor trying to save money to retrieve his body. And then we have Kaithel who is the lord of that territory and they meet in a Diane which is like a blood house but it's not like a sexual thing. So they meet there and he like is just drawn to her because this is also a Faded Nates book and they kind of can't stay away from one another even though that they know that they like should be together and Kaithel is very like oh I have to do this and that for the crown. I'm very drawn to his duty but they form an unlikely friendship and then that friendship slowly evolves into more so I end up giving this book four stars. I did really enjoy it. I love the world. I think it's so fun. I love the 
like the Kylore, everything about them being vampire aliens and all of the fun things that come along with the like bites and the mate bond and whatnot. I will say I like the first book more just because I feel like the friends to lovers really um it just didn't keep the tension as high as in the first book because the first book really just like blew my mind that it was so hard for this book to um, capture my attention to the same level but I still do really enjoy the series and I will be continuing on. The next book that I read is A Ship of Bones and Teeth by Karina Halley and this is pitched as a Little Mermaid x the Pirates of the Caribbean mashup and in this book we follow Marin who is a mermaid under the sea and she sees a human prince and falls in love with him from the sea and asks a sea witch to turn her human and give her legs except now it's 10 years later and this life is not what she thought. Her husband is kind of abusive to her and she really wants to go back to her life as a mermaid. Then we have Captain Ramsey who is a pirate and he kidnaps Marin and her husband and he sets off to ransom them for more money because he's a pirate but Marin and Ramsey just find themselves drawn to one another. So this book is definitely kind of dark romancy. It gets pretty gory but unfortunately I didn't really like it. I ended up giving it two stars. I really thought going into this that I was gonna like it. I liked the vibes a lot in the beginning. I thought that the, the setting was really cool. The Little Mermaid and Pirates of the Caribbean mashup like was going so well at first and then it just really didn't hold my attention. Um, I thought the plot was kind of like all over the place. I didn't really know where it was gonna go. It kind of would drag a little bit and then there was a plot twist with the pirates that I didn't like. It just kind of felt out of place and then that kind of killed the rest of the story for me. I did finish it but I didn't really like this one which is so sad because you guys know I usually love most of the books that I read but this one was just not for me. After that I read Baby Moon or Bust by Ava Hunter and I, I don't know what it is but this month I read two secret baby books. So we have Solomon and Tessa. Tessa is an interior designer in LA and Solomon is a wild Alaskan man who has kind of been a recluse ever since his wife passed away and they meet one night when they're both on a trip to Nashville and they have a wild night together and they don't even exchange names and then months later Solomon sees Tessa on TV and she is pregnant. So he's like what the heck he goes to LA to find her only to find out that she has gone on a baby moon by herself because she's kind of determined to be a single mother she wasn't able really to find him and she was like I'm just gonna do it on my own so then he comes to Mexico where she is and he's like I we need to learn like how to co-parent the child and like I want to be in my child's life and so it's kind of them learning like okay like what the heck are we gonna do now and this one was so fun and cute I ended up giving it four stars I really enjoyed just how like committed to being a father Solomon was. He really really wanted what was best for him and Tess and it was just like a really cute story overall especially like I have not really read that many accidental pregnancy secret baby type romances but maybe I'm just getting older but I don't hate them. I kind of like it. I think it's a very interesting dynamic and a situation that a lot of people probably face in their life which is probably why these types of books are popular. Who doesn't love a man who is just willing to do anything for his child and for the woman that he loves and I just really enjoyed them like reconnecting and really they were just kind of there to learn how to co-parent and how they were gonna you know responsibly handle the situation and then deeper feelings emerged and it was beautiful. Then I read A Court of Monsters and Malice by Eliza Rain. This is the third book in the what is it the Shadow Bound Bride? Shadow Miss Bride? Something like that series. So these books are always really short. They're like under 200 pages and I just have a lot of fun reading them. They're like really easy breezy fancy romances. So the premise is we follow Reyna and she is a gold spinner I think in the gold fae court and she gets captured by the shadow court with like the evil shadow prince and basically to protect her from his evil stepmother because she he needs her powers for his plans he is betrothed to her and then now in these this third book we have these sort of trials going on that Reyna has to participate in even though she is just a human. I, there is a like a larger plot at work. I'm interested to see more of the secrets of the magic that we're learning to about. I will give this book probably like 3.5 slash 4 stars. 
it's just really quick and easy to read and it keeps me interested it keeps me hooked because i just you know want to know what's gonna happen in this world like i'm invested enough now but it's just like it's like an ordinary fantasy romance there's usually like one spicy scene per book and it's very much a do they like each other do they not so i'm interested to see how much longer the series is going to be and i kind of am hoping in the next book we start to get some concrete answers about what's going on because again it is very kind of like quick it almost feels like it's one big book that's just broken up into little chunks so it's an interesting format slash way to release books but i don't know i'm, ha I'm having a good time for now then next we had the next Ellie Hazelwood book, Love Theoretically. I went to a signing for this book, so my copy is signed. Let's see. I love her. She's such like a chaotic, cute human being. And we have this book that takes place in Boston, and it's about rival physicists. We have Jack, who is an experimental physicist, and Elsie, who is a theoretical physicists and apparently those kinds of physicists have beef with each other but Elsie because being an adjunct professor which is, which is what she does that doesn't make a lot of money doesn't have health insurance so she's also a fake girlfriend on the side and he is the older brother of one of her favorite fake girlfriend clients and so she shows up to a job interview at in a for a tenured position as a professor at MIT and he is there and he's like what the heck I thought you were like a librarian because obviously she doesn't say what she really does when she's fake girlfriending and then it's kind of like now he is the person that is going to decide whether or not she gets this job that she like really really needs and of course I gave this book five stars first of all I think that this book really also explores the difficulties of being in academia. I am not in academia myself past a master's degree. I did not want to get a PhD, but I am still kind of adjacent enough to it to understand, not firsthand, but like a lot of the struggles that go into this and how like kind of Elsie was in this position that she felt like she had to have a drunk professor to get the professorship that she needed, but was that really what she was wanting to do with her life? But she has this mentor that has like a lot of power over her and also just the, the different politics at play in the job interview process for a tenured professorship. I thought that this book like really actually kind of dug into academia and its problems more so than the other books. They've kind of touched on it a little bit more, more so the first book than the other one, but this one really got kind of like political about like real issues that people in these positions face. Also, Elsie has type 1 diabetes. She needs insulin and as an adult professor she does not have health insurance so that is also very difficult for her so i thought that that aspect of the book was very well done then we have jack and i know people say that she kind of does the same plot a lot of the times i don't even care he is obsessed with her but she doesn't know it she's oblivious to it and there's like just so much good banter and tension between the two and I just love I just loved it in this like academia setting and then there's just a lot about like their work and he admires her work and like it's just so good it's just so good like listen every time I will eat it up I don't care I will love it every single time also next Ali Hazelwood is doing a paranormal romance which is so different from this so I absolutely cannot wait I absolutely cannot wait but I I don't know I just really love her stem romances and they're just so good every time they just hit the spot Okay, next I read Rain Me In by Kayla Gross, and this is a cowboy romance, and we follow Blake. She is a plus-size woman, and she has been suffering from the loss of her brother five years ago in a terrible accident, and she kind of left home after that accident and hasn't really been back, but because her mother has an injury, she has to come back and help out on their ranch, and then we have Gavin, who owns his own ranch in town, and he's kind of like handling the family burdens and the secrets and he was her younger brother's best friend and he was kind of had a crush on Blake but now she's like back in town and it might become something more real. I really loved this book. I think it dealt a lot with grief and how do we handle it even though it's been years and the way that Blake and Gavin were kind of able to come together to help each other work through their issues is really beautiful. I also love that we had a plus size main character who was like a horse rider and doing all these cool things but like it was just a descriptor of her. It wasn't really like a main plot point which we love to see it. We definitely need more of that in fiction and I just had a really good time. If you are looking for another cowboy romance because cowboy romance is all the rage right now like you definitely need to pick up this book because it is. It is good. 
and it had a lot of like descriptions of barrel racing which I never really knew what that was before and I feel like it really captured the small town cowboy romance like the small town cowboy vibes of like the small town romances cowboy romances very well especially because it was set in Texas and like I just feel like it perfectly kind of encapsulated that experience I felt like I was in the world not that I know what it's like to be in a cowboy town in Texas but I felt like I was there from reading the book and then the last book I read is Minx by Sophie Lark and this is a different one from her but of course she is amazing at anything that she writes so in this book we follow Blake again another character named Blake and she is the highest paid escort in Manhattan and she's kind of playing the own long game with all of these high powered men and then we have Ramses who is also another high powered man in New York and he becomes very fascinated with Blake and he will kind of do anything to have her. So yeah, I think that this was really cool. It was kind of like low angst but very, 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 very spicy with some things that I have never read about before and Sophie just knocked it out of the park and did an amazing job with this romance book. It definitely was intriguing. Drew you right in, was super spicy and I had a great time reading it and I gave it five stars. So that is it for everything that I read in June. I'm proud of myself for continuing to do a wrap up every month because that was my goal for the year. And in terms of my future reading, what I'm really focusing on is, you'll notice I did not post a July TBR this month. I kind of want a more mood read, but again, I'm focusing on not picking up books just because they're easy and fast to read through and just really trying to go for more of the books that I just like really want to read but sometimes I, I don't because I'm like oh I need to read so many books blah, blah 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 and like not focusing on the numbers of it because I think when you're really involved in the book influencer space it's really easy to be like I want to read 150 books a year and to accomplish that goal like you tend to sh shy away from the longer more intricate books that just take a longer time to read. So for me I'm really just refocusing on reading books that I want to read and not really worrying about am I reading enough or blah 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 and also just letting myself take time reading books. I also am picking up more audiobooks again which is really fun I kind of go through phases with audiobooks but I'm back in an audiobook mood so that's kind of what I am currently reading in the moment but that's what you can look forward to in my July wrap up. Let me know if you've read any of these books down below and let me know your thoughts and have some fun read some books and I'll catch you guys in the next one.